Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about rotational motion and some of the variables we use to describe when something is rotating. This is the beginning of what the IB calls rigid body mechanics, the HL topic A4 in the data booklet. Yo. So when we say rotation, there's really, uh, we'll kind of distinguish this way between the two types of motion that we're kind of interested in. So rotation means uh, kind of what it sounds like, but something sort of spinning around uh, an axis, a fixed axis, uh, that's opposed to translation, which is our way of saying something moving in a straight line. So you just want to have these ideas in mind of translation versus rotation. Most of what we do throughout mechanics so far is translational motion, so stuff moving in a straight line. And we can use fun stuff like SUVAT and F equals MA and momentum to describe what's happening. We have very similar things for rotating objects. So we'll start off just like we did with mechanics. We'll start off with um, some quantities of motion. Uh, we're going to talk about displacement, velocity, and acceleration just uh, of the rotating kind, which we call angular. So we're going to talk about angular displacement, angular velocity, angular acceleration. Good news, they work uh, essentially just like the linear ones that we're used to. Our measurement system here, because we won't be measuring like linear distances in meters, we measure as angles and we measure with the good old radian. So you want to make sure you're okay with the radian scale of angles. Um, definitely you want to know one rotation is two pi radians. That's uh, probably the main number to know. In other words, 360 degrees going all the way around a circle one time is two pi radians. And that's all a radian is. So we're going to be measuring stuff like angular velocity as a ro rate of rotation, and we'll measure in radians per second. If it helps, you can kind of just think of where, you know, it's an angle per time. So you could also think of degrees per second, if that makes more sense to your brain, if radians are strange to you. But we're just talking about like an angular uh, displacement over time. Here's a fun little happy animation to show the idea of a radian and what we're going to be talking about with this angular, uh, angular speed thing. So um, a radian is officially looks like this on a circle uh, because two pi of them, so uh, just a little more than six of them would make up one full, you know, circle. So a radian is this, you know, angular uh, size, if you want. And here we're looking at as the thing rotates around. It's rotation in radians. You can compare that to cycles. So once we hit one cycle, we'll be at about, you know, two pi radians, six and change. And this is the symbol, lowercase Greek omega, is the symbol we're going to use for angular speed. Uh, and you can see that it's uh, 1.7 or so radians per second is describing how fast this thing is spinning. That's what we're going to do. Here's another one, fun one, just a picture. Uh, some of this two pi radian stuff. Uh, if I have a circle with a radius of one, like this, uh, the distance all the way around the circle is two pi. Yeah, that's, like, that's, that's the unit circle right there, unrolling to show us, you know, two pi radians, two pi, uh, in this case, is like the length around the whole circle, but two pi is one cycle, is the takeaway that you wanna know. And here we are, we have, guess what? Equations of motion for rotation, and don't they look familiar? I think they look a whole lot like these. Uh, yeah, so these really are just SUVAT for rotational variables. So we just got to talk about the different rotational variables we have. So this one is maybe a little uh, different in style, but it means the same thing. Delta theta, theta being our general symbol for like an angle. So the idea here is like, what's the change in the angular position of the thing as it rotates around? So this is all one variable. It's not like two things multiplied together. This represents one thing, and that's angular displacement. So we'll measure in radians, like how far something rotates um, in radians. These two are for angular velocity. So this is the Greek letter omega. It's not a W. It's officially a lowercase Greek omega. It looks a lot like a W. Um, yeah, but that's angular velocity, uh, which we're... And also say angular speed 
when we're just talking about the size of the number. And here we just use initial and final. So in the SUVAT equations, we use U for initial speed and V for like final speed or velocity. Here we use little subscripts I for initial, F for final. And those will be measured in radians per second. And we have an acceleration uh, in radians per second squared. And we use alpha, Greek letter alpha for this. That's going to be angular acceleration. And T is still time. So uh, really, you approach these problems exactly like you approach regular old SUVAT problems, um, which is to say you can make a little table with these five values, decide what you have. They are going to be, we're going to use vector notation for these. Um, so we got to think about plus and minuses, and here's how we're going to do that part. In rotation, it's a little complicated, and there's some fancier rules of how these work as vectors, which involve three dimensions, which is so fun. The IB has said they're not going to really get into that too much, and so a, a typical, a good way to think of it is just keep track of clockwise or counterclockwise. Whenever you're looking at a rotation, you'll typically draw it like flat on a page of a thing going around in a circle, either clockwise or counterclockwise. You are free to choose which way you want to make positive, which way you want to make negative. Um, I kind of think of positive as clockwise and negative as counterclockwise. You are, can certainly do it the other way if you want, and you'll get the same answers either way. But so if a thing is rotating you know, clockwise, I would say it has a positive angular velocity. If it's rotating counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, uh, as you'll see on some IB problems, then you would put a negative angular velocity. So that's how we'll do signs. And there are ways to sort of translate between angular stuff and linear stuff. So if you're looking at an angular speed and you want to talk about the like uh, what we'll call linear speed of something um, like an object in a straight line, there are ways you can do it. Essentially what you do is you multiply the angular thing by r to get the linear thing. So these are not in the data booklet. They probably are good to generally know. Um, one of them, this one, the uh, velocity one, is sort of in a roundabout way in the data booklet in uh, mechanics. Somewhere in topic A with circular motion stuff is this guy. So this is a good one. That This is definitely the most common one to use. But if you want to find, like, uh, say, the linear distance something travels, you can multiply its angular displacement by r, the radius, uh, you know, of its path. Same thing for acceleration uh, and so on. So here's some little animations to show this sort of idea. Um, here are two objects moving that are, you know, rotating about a point. And they would have the same angular velocity. They're both covering the same like angular displacement in the same amount of time. So they both take the same amount of time to go around a circle. So from here to the time they get back, they both cover two pi radians in the same amount of time. So these two would have the same angular velocity, but because the blue one is further away, it's like R would be the distance from the center to the object. Um, for the blue one, since R is much bigger, it has a much bigger linear velocity. If we were to track its sort of uh, speed here, which is tangential, which is so fun. This one's definitely going a lot faster through space than the kind of pinkish one, right? You can kind of see that just looking at them. This blue one is definitely moving a lot faster than this one if we were to just talk about its speed in like meters per second. Whereas these two, and the, that V is represented by these uh, vectors, tangent to the circle, in this one, you can see they both have the same V. They're both going at the same like rate through space. If I measure them with a speed gun, I get the same number in meters per second or miles per hour. But because they have the same speed and this pink one has a smaller circle to travel through, it's going a lot faster in terms of its angular velocity. So opposite idea, if I solve for this, the angular velocity is V over R. So a bigger R would mean a lower angular velocity for two things with the same V. So that's sort of the difference between uh, angular and linear velocity. Um, whether you're talking about its rate of moving through a circle or its rate of actually moving in one direction through space. There are a whole lot of sort of analogies we can draw between rotational and translational stuff. So we have our uh, translational variables like velocity and acceleration and the rotational sort of equivalents 
like angular velocity, angular acceleration. Well, this unit, we're going to get into a lot of these. So as a little preview, here's some other uh, sort of analogies that we're going to get into. Um, because the good news is a lot of the concepts and math that we do when we talk about rotational motion are very, very similar, sometimes identical to the way we do things in a straight line. So uh, this is the stuff we kind of just went through with displacement and velocity and acceleration. We have these angular equivalents. In good old, you know, uh, one-dimensional translational motion, we have, uh, you know, a force as a thing that causes acceleration. Well, we're going to get into the sort of very similar idea in rotation is there's a thing called torque, and the torque on an object will tell you about its angular acceleration. When we talk about mass, uh, it turns out there's sort of a rotational equivalent called moment of inertia, which is a thing we'll do. And we have momentum. We also have angular momentum. And even a couple other things, like we have a regular, you know, linear kinetic energy. We do also have rotational kinetic energy. So a lot of the same basic ideas of mechanics apply to rotation. So the good news is it's all very, very similar. Um, and this is a good sort of... Uh, topic to even help further practice and uh, you know get good at this mechanics stuff so let's do a practice problem together with these equations all right so we have a problem here with the spinning top I got an initial angular velocity of 30 radians per second I have a rate of deceleration so it's slowing its rotation uh, as a top does, and it eventually falls over when the angular velocity decreases to 5 radians per second. So I want to calculate the number of rotations the top makes before it falls over. Uh, that's fun. Okay, so um, this is definitely going to be a sort of rotational suvet. Uh, so I'm going to use these uh, rotational quantities. So I can do the same sort of method I like to do with suvet, which is to make a table because I have these five different quantities and same deal. If I know three of them, I can always find a fourth with these equations. So uh, there's this, there's also, just let me get my S equivalent in there, which is delta theta and then T. Okay, so the question is, what do I know from the problem? Well, it kind of straight up tells me that I have an initial angular velocity of 30 radians per second. I have a final angular velocity of 5 radians per second. And they give me this uh, rate of deceleration. Because they say decelerates, I want to make sure I put a negative sign in here because it's definitely going to have to slow from 30 down to 5. And that happens at a rate of uh, about half of a radian per second per second. So 0.45 radians per second squared. Okay, the question here is what am I trying to solve for the number of rotations? So I want to know how many times this top, you know, spins around. I think the variable that will help me figure that out is angular displacement. If I can say it went like, you know, 10 pi radians, I can figure out how many times around that is. So that means I think I don't really care about time, so I won't worry about it. I'll pick the equation that doesn't have a T in it. So looking at my four equations that deal with this uh, rotational kinematic stuff. I think there's one equation that doesn't have a T, and that's the one I'll use, which is omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two times angular acceleration times, I'm gonna put parentheses just to uh, be careful here, the thing I'm looking for, which is the angular displacement. So first thing I want to do is solve for this. That's my unknown. That's what I'm trying to solve for. So let me just do the algebra first. I'm going to take away this whole uh, guy, the initial angular velocity squared. And then I think I'm going to divide by 2 alpha. So I'm going to do these steps at once. Split them up in two steps if you like. Over 2 alpha. So this will tell me you know, my angular displacement. And I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do one more step to figure out number of rotations. But let's do this first. Let's plug in our values now and see what we get. So final was five radians per second. I'm gonna square this, minus my initial angular speed was 30 radians per second. I'm gonna square this. I'm gonna divide it all by two times the, the acceleration of negative 0.45 uh, radians per second squared. 
And so I should get an answer in radians if you buy that, looking at the units. And I should get a positive answer too, which makes sense to me. It's going to, you know, displace in the same direction as these velocities. And let's see, when I put that in my calculator, I get about 972. 972.2 repeating officially radians. I'll keep it like that. I don't want to round until the very end. So 972 radians is its displacement. So it moved through an angular displacement of 972 radians as it went around and around and around. So I just got to figure out how many rotations is that? Well, I know one rotation is two pi radians, so we just do a little unit conversion here. I have uh, a displacement of radians. I can turn it into rotations, just, uh, I mean, what I do is I multiply, or I divide by two pi. So I got uh, this many radians. The deal is, uh, I want how many radians are in one rotation. And the deal is one rotation is two pi radians. So if I kind of, you know, factor label, uh, unit convert this way, radians go away, I'm going to end up with rotations. All right, so just divide by 2 pi. Every rotation is 2 pi radians. If I went this many radians, divide by 2 pi, and I'll get what I need, which is 154.73 rotations. And because three sig figs will round that to 155 rotations. All right, so there you go. That's uh, very, very, very much like doing good old SUVAT with some angular quantities now. We'll talk later about how you end up with angular acceleration and all that other fun stuff. There you go. Angular SUVAT. Have fun.